So today um, we will talk a little bit about, I guess my, my plan is generally to go through the, some of more of the, like some of the practice that he assigned there. Um, I know I'm sure a lot of people have already done it, but I think it's worthwhile for, to go through it just to make sure everybody understands. And also I have not finished most of them. So <laughs> I think it's, it's worthwhile for that. And so um, especially in the recurrent section, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know what I'm doing that well. So hopefully, even though, you know, there might be, you know, maybe some people can help me out a little bit here. Um, and hopefully it's still a beneficial session for most people here. So yeah, I'm sorry if I'm fumbling around a little bit more in this live, live, uh, live stream than usual. Um, we will see how we will see how it goes. Um, okay, so uh, we will start, I guess my idea is we're going to start with some of the questions now let me find it where did i do those questions is there a question no okay so i'm thinking we're gonna start with some of the uh asymptotic notation ones because i can do those re relatively well and so i thought we just do that just to get a little bit of uh, get going well here um and then we will um uh, try to do some uh, recursion questions and again recursion questions i don't know what i'm doing very well in recursion questions so forgive if i can't do them very well but uh we will we'll figure it out together um okay so i will begin we don't have to do all of them in order like because again i'm sure a lot of people have done a lot of these questions already so i've done all of these questions um so i guess we'll just start with um some of these ones from this slide here from this uh uh as I'm talking notations, PowerPoint one, these questions here. Any questions or anything before we get going? Um, I see we have 53 people here, so um, we might need another person to stream. Is it if is someone not able to see my screen because of something? Um, if, if anyone has issues that they can't see my screen. Yeah, but... I can't see it says the stream a bit is full. Okay, so if so, if someone I don't know who, if anybody could be volunteer and stream my screen, uh, I'm on it. One second. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate that, Cameron. Um, so yeah, you can just watch that, and then just make sure you mute me, like mute my, uh, my audio, if you're watching the other stream, um, because that'll cause an echo. Anyway, not an echo, but that'll cause a, you'll hear it weird. There we go. We got someone. So thank you. I appreciate that. Um, okay. So let me click here. Okay. So uh, let's start uh, with uh, uh, some of these questions. Um, let me actually open up the solutions as well, just so I have them here. And I've already done a little bit of practice, so maybe I'll open that window too. Uh, what are you guys most concerned about in this in this uh, for this midterm? Like, what's the chapter that is the most concerning? All. All. Anything yeah. from lecture five. Lecture five is is which one? Recursion. Um. Uh. Yeah, stacks linked lists. and trees and linked lists. Yeah. Okay. Mathematical induction. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. So yeah, I agree. I agree for sure. I think uh, the um, uh, pretty much induction is the main thing that I got. I don't know how to do it. I'm going to be honest. I have no. I don't know how to do it properly. So uh, everything else, I I think I have a relatively good grasp on. Um, so we'll start with a little bit of uh, the as of tally notation, but we don't have to spend too much on that. Um, and then we will um, uh, we will just um we'll move on hopefully to recursion then, and then we can talk a little bit about linked lists and stuff like that after too. So we'll see. Um, okay, so let's start with, I guess this exercise here. Let's just start with this. Prove that, uh, prove that uh, 2n plus 100 log n is big O n, um, which is fine. So uh, I think the way you do this is you just say okay prove that this is true so uh, we th what that means is that 2n plus 100 log log n is um uh, less than equal to you know cn you know for all uh 
n greater than n zero, right? So we just have to say that figure out what c is in this case, right? To figure out what this is true, and then in this case you would just pick. Um, usually, what you do in situations like this, you just pick the coefficients. So you just take the sum of the coefficients over here, right? Especially if everything's positive. So if anything was negative, you just take the absolute value. So I'm just going to pick c equals 102, right? So I'm just going to say 2n plus 100 log n less than equal to 102n. And I just want to figure out what n0 is in this case. Um, so uh, we can just uh, try different n values, right? So if I just try n0, well, I'll just try n equals uh, 3, let's say, right? Uh, then I can just try, well, actually, we should pick something that's easy to take a log of, so I'm going to pick n equals 2. Um, so let's try, you know, 2 times 2 plus 100 log 2 um, uh, less than equal to 102 times 2. So 4 plus 100 less than equal to um, uh, 204, which is, of course, true. So we see that there exists some c. So we can say it is it is a tr it is a true statement to say that there exists some c value, right? That makes this true for all n greater than well two in this case, right? Um, and so there we go. We have shown that this is true here. So generally, when solving these kinds of problems, oh, I should have the chat open in case people want to say anything. I'll have four twenty eight chat open. Um, uh, Adam. Yes. Log. So I I always log. LG of n, it's always going to be base of 2, correct? Yes, it'll always be base of 2, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it'll always be base of 2. In this course, right? Uh, not in other courses, but yeah. Um, so generally in steps like this, like if, if you know that this like, this is going to be true, right? Um, especially it helps if you already know it's going to be true. Um, then, you know, to pick a C value, just take the sum of the absolute values, values, of all the coefficients, right? And this is generally just a good strategy. Again, the whenever you're doing these kinds of proofs, you just need to figure out some c value and some n zero value. Um, uh, so uh, you know, there's nothing much like that. Someone asked, I wonder how he will ask for proofs. Like there could be a question like this, and it's just multiple choice of the answer. Well, no, actually, but how do you multiple choice? Yeah, <laughs> how do you multiple choice uh, <laughs> something like this? Maybe. Did he say whether there's questions where you upload answers or not? Or I think there, are, I think there are no. It's I, actually, all I don't know. like just I don't choosing know. or in, entering. Yeah, I think he, I think he said no written questions, and someone in the chat just agreed with me here. So I, I'm pretty sure he said no written questions. I remember in the lecture, he said that uh, like when he was going over this, that he, uh, like a sample question for this could be like again like the multiple choice and just pick the two like C or N values that are correct. Um, yeah, and the other ones are not like the, there's like yeah okay because there's always like multiple I am uh, am I recording yeah, I think I'm recording I am recording yes thank you for checking um, so yeah there's always like mo like a lot of c and n values that can solve the question because you're just looking for some c value and some n zero value but yeah I guess I guess there could be multiple choice where some of them are incorrect and one of them is correct and so you just have to pick out the correct one and you just want to check is it true like is the inequality true for the given C and N zero values, right? And, and so it might be, it might be not, but that's just plugging in numbers essentially. So nothing crazy with that. I was doing some questions where you like, you solved, you like canceled out the ends and then you had the C at the other side by itself. And then you somehow solved for C and then like, I, I know I had that for some questions, but then yeah. I don't know, maybe it doesn't work for this question. Where you have to like solve for the particular C value? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I know what you mean. I don't know if we'll, we might have an example like that. So let me look through this again and see if there's an example like that. I know what you mean, though, about this one. I think for those ones, he was trying to find like the most like tightest, like mm -hmm. bound for it. You get what I mean? Yeah, that makes also, sense. Multiple right answers. That makes sense. Yeah. So I think that's the thing that's messing me up is like, oh, he can tell us all the, how to prove this, but then he may just it may not be the most tight answer, but it's still is correct yeah i don't know which which just prove so, it still which solves this question it doesn't have to be like the tightest of the c and the n values but yeah so for for inequalities though i the, i saw this as a, a technique they use in some of the practice questions mm -hmm. because we have 2n plus log n um mm -hmm. and we know we can just say oh, i guess we know by inspection that n is the greatest power yeah in this um what you could do is you can say okay 2n 
plus 100 log n is less than or equal to 2n plus 100n, yeah. which you can turn yeah. into one okay. term. That's true. Which would be less than cn. Yeah. Uh, that that takes a little bit of pre, pre-knowledge, pre though, right? Of, like, that th- that takes a pre, like, you assume that n is greater than log n, which is a true assumption, right? But, yeah, I, I don't... Like, I don't know if that's too much of an assumption or not to for the test. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because it's a multiple choice. So, yeah, that works too. That, that works too, what you said there. So maybe I'll just I'll just say that quickly, what, what Cameron said there. Uh, another way to say this is to say that, okay, I know that n is greater than log n, okay, asymptotically. So I can say that um, uh, 2n plus 100 log n is smaller than um, uh, 2n plus 100n, which is smaller than cn, right? Um, and so, uh, well, actually, 2n plus 100n is what I'm going to say. Okay, and then pretty much at this point, you can just say 2n plus 100 log n is less than 102n. And same thing, really, yeah. That, that I guess that gets you the same thing as here, uh, as saying this, um, as what I did, because it also gets you 102. Um, but I guess it, you're, you're explicitly doing, making this assumption, but I guess that's fine. It doesn't matter. There you go. Okay. Someone gave a, um, uh, suggestion. Okay. So it's a recursion tree question. So we will do that, but in a little bit, uh, given T N is root and T root N plus N find the asymptotic type bound for T N draw the recursion super tangent type bound. Do not prove a guess. Okay. It seems like a little bit of a, it seems like a tricky question <laughs> with the roots. So, uh, but we'll figure it. It might be okay because you're multiplying roots together, so it's okay. But anyway, um, let's do uh, let's do one. I mean, I guess this is we we can, we can skip the the one there. That's um the the next asymptotic bound one. We can try this one. Show that the summation of this is big O n log n. So uh, the summation here, right? I goes from one to n of log i, right? So if I just write out a couple terms, it's going to be log uh, one, right? Plus log two, plus log three, plus dot, 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 plus log n minus one, plus log n, right? So um, this whole thing, right? Well, first of all, I'm just going to note here, we have n terms here, right? We have n terms here. Um, But if I replace all of them with log n's, Right? If I replace all of them with log n's uh, instead of log 1 going up to n, well, certainly my what I have created there, so let me let me just do that quickly. If I replace the whole thing, right, like this, with just a bunch of n's, 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 well, certainly this will be bigger, right? This will be bigger than that. Um, and so uh, this will be bigger than uh, log uh, and, and again, there's n of them here, right? n of them here. So this will be smaller than n log n. And so we have that the summation is smaller than n log n. So it's big O n log n. I thought it was an interesting question because it just makes you think about this, but I think that's a good good thing to do here. It's interesting how we have to like be a little bit creative here with how we um, show these inequalities, but this is one way to do it. It's just to say, well, replace them all with n's and then they'll be bigger than that. What if we had omega instead of big O for this question? Show that it is, um, yes, good, that's that's nice. Um, show that the summation da, 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 is omega n log n, um, lower bound, um, how do we do it for lower bound? Uh, do you want it? Uh, yeah, I hear you, yeah. Okay, I guess if it's the lower bound, like the omega, uh, the, yeah. Like the warm side, I think we can just say uh, the c has to be less than one, like it be half one over four, and it's going to work. Okay, let me let me write that down. So you're saying that if we had the same thing and we just wanted to show that this sum, oops, this sum, i goes from one to n of log i is greater than uh, greater than or equal to n log n, well c n log n, right? So you're saying I could choose C to be to be what again? Half. One half. Yeah. So one half. half. One, one over two. One over two. Yeah. 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 
And so then this is less than or equal to log one plus log two plus log. Um, why is the, uh, well, of course, you know, plus dot 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 log n. Uh, why is that? One half. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the way I'm thinking about it is that yeah. I still know that the summation is n log n. Oh, is it wrong it... to take something which is greater than, and I still can't be sure. Well, we know that we know that the summation is less than n log n. Mm. n log n, right? But I can't quite say that this is n log n. Yeah. And you would be right at that point to say one half n log n is less than n log n. Um, mm. But we can't. I don't think we can necessarily say. Yeah, that doesn't quite make sense. Yeah, I guess your point. Because if it was something less than the summation of log i, then it would make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it was something less than the summation, yeah, because then you would have these right next to each other, right? And then they would be, yeah. And then you would say one half of that is less than that. Okay. Um. So okay, let me just close this. Yeah. So for if it's omega, if it was omega. Um. I don't know how you show it for omega. I'll be honest. If anybody has any ideas, I can go for it. But yeah, I don't know how you show it for omega. Okay. Otherwise, let's. Wait, Mark, are we trying to find them? Uh, so you say why? Yeah. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. curious. Just curious. If this was, if this was, omega. Yeah. What would what would we do? And yeah, I can't prove it that it is. I don't think. Yeah. Maybe we just say one times one times one. Okay. So you're saying there that. Um, I can replace the sum. I goes from one to n of log i, which is equal to log one plus log two plus da 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 plus log n. Um, then uh, you say just replace them all with ones, which is certainly less, which would be true. But then I think that would be showing that it's n, because because you see I can say that I can say that you know one plus one plus one plus dot 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 plus one <laughs> but there's n of them uh is less than wait is that true is that less than log one plus log two plus log dot 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 plus log n because log one is not bigger than one is it log one is zero yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so let's just say log, log two log base two of log base two of two is one so log base two of three is okay it's already bigger than one so zero one um so i guess we can say that so then but then we're saying n is less th so our summation plus dot 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 log n and so we're showing that it's omega n right wait how can we prove the lower bound if we already proved the upper bound well, yeah, using different constants and just showing showing that something is upper bound something doesn't really make it so you can't show lower bound something. Just uh, yeah, using a different using a different z value and n zero value. So I guess we showed that it is that summation is omega n. Um, there, but not um, omega n log n, but that's okay. Um, let's just do this one it takes two seconds show that 2n plus 1 2 to the n plus 1 as they go to the n so 2 to the n plus 1 is less than or equal to uh, c 2 to the n um, then you just write 2 to the n plus 1 as 2 2 to the n less than or equal to c 2 to the n and then this is obviously true for c greater than 2 or greater than or equal to 2 um, for all and greater than zero. So yeah, there you go. Um, after certain n values, it may not be a case. Yeah, but some problems are exactly like this for each of them. Yeah. Um, okay, that's good. This is fine. We can just skip that one. These are just uh, these are just like not complicated ones. This one is also not complicated. This one is also not complicated. Uh, unless it is, no, it's not. Um, 
just going through some of the questions. Okay, so that's that's everything from the asymptotic notation one that I wanted to look at. Um, there was one, yeah, there was one uh, section here on the uh, determining complexity of code structures. I think that would be worth our time to go through because I'm I'm pretty sure there will be a determining complexity of code structure on the test. Um, so let's go through that quickly. Let's make sure we all understand determining the complexity of code structures. And then from there, we will, um, from there, we can just uh, move on to recurrent stuff. Um, okay, so uh, let's just determine the complexity of these guys. Right. So um, uh, you have some sort of complexity that's not constant whenever you have some kind of loop that's happening. So a for loop, a for loop, a while loop, and a for loop, right? These will all produce some kind of complexity that depends on n, especially, well, only when n is part of the criteria that's being checked here. Right? Um, so for this one, we just say, okay, well, int i equals zero, i less than n, n pl uh, i plus plus, sum equals sum minus i. So all this will happen is just this will run n times, right? This will run n times. And so it is big O n, right? That's the worst case scenario, is that it will run uh, in terms of n, right? That's how long it will take. Um, so similarly here, pretty much the exact same thing. It's just that our, our limiting case is now n times n or n squared. So that just means that this thing will now run n squared times instead of just n times. And that's all that is there. Okay, now this one is a little bit different. So um, uh, here we have the uh, pretty much a similar situation right we have int i equals one right and uh every time we are multiplying i right we have some n we have some n over here right um and every time we are multiplying i by two right so this will run you know the, the i value will go one two four eight sixteen da, 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 right and we have to know how many times it will run right until it gets to until it gets to n because i has to be less than n right um, and uh, I don't know if I have, do I have an expo? I mean, I know whenever you have a situation like this where, you know, your I value is going one, one, two, four, eight, sixteen, dot, 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 N, right? Or, you know, at the, at the most, it's going to be N. Um, then this is order law, uh, log base two of N, right? And the fact that this two matches with this two here. So if you were multiplying by three every time, it would be log base three of n. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have. I you... Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go for go it, ahead, go for uh... it. No, no, I wasn't gonna say anything. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I uh, I think lg log already means it's log base two. Yes, yes, yes. I just want to emphasize that this. I wanted to color it, color it in. So this this two it goes to this two here. So that's why I did it like that. Um. You can prove it manually by tracking the code and doing some substitution to show it's log n. I'd love to do that. How? Uh, let me think about how to do that. I never even thought of that, I'm going to be honest. So, like, I never thought to actually do it. Um, so, you can prove it manually by tracking the code and doing some substitution to show... Do you want to... Any... Uh, show it's just the solution is log n. So, well, I mean, essentially, you have some starting... I mean, in general, what it is is you have some... Like sorting algorithms labs? Oh, is that what you mean? Okay, we'll see. I think I I mean this really seems like okay, here, yeah, here. Someone has someone has a has a a post here that looks good. Let's see what this is. So while a equals one, while a less than b start a times uh, start? Is that what it says? Okay, well it's something. Uh it doesn't really matter. Um, and <laughs> so then this is a, a times two. So you're multiplying a by two. So at first a is one, then a is two, two cubed all the way to two to the K until, um, I guess we're assuming that K to the K is greater than B, right? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So in this example here, I think I understand. So in this example here, if we track I, I, the first go around is one and then it's two and then it's two squared, oh, sorry, two squared. And then it's two cubed, two to the four, dot, 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 until it's two to the K, where two to the K is greater than uh, N, 
right? Two of the keys greater than n. And we want to know how many times will this run? So at this point, I think we just say, we just solve for, um, I guess, yeah, okay. And then we just assume, let's just assume asymptotically that this n is a power of k, okay? Assume asymptotically that this n is, sorry, a power of two. So we just say, you know, n equals two to the k and then solving for how many times this will run will be log n. Right. And you can see generally this will be true, right? If this was just, a, let's just say, a, a m for multiplier, right? It would be m squared, m, m cubed, m to the four, m to the k, m here would be log base m of n, right? So, um, uh, yeah, there we go. That makes sense why. So we're saying, you know, we're going to stop this repeat, or this, this loop, until 2 to the k is bigger than n because that's the condition that stops us. And then let's just let's just say asymptotically, n is an exact power of two, then let's solve for k there, uh, and we get that complexity. So it's big O log base m of n, and m is this multiplier here. Okay. Um, and then this one, this doesn't depend on n, right? There's no n in here, so this is big O one, because it doesn't depend on n. There's no n value. It will just take a constant amount of time. Not a function of n. Okay, um, great. Uh, let's go through. Let's go through all the code structures just because I think. Uh, again, I think this will be on the test tomorrow, so I think it's worth our time. But thank you for sending this. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, of course, if anyone has any questions, I have the chat open. I have the four twenty eight chat open. Coe four twenty eight. So wait for the constant see. complexity. Why did you write uh, big O one? Uh, because this takes a constant amount of time, and so that's. Big O one. That's, oh, that's just big O one. Okay. Right. Which just means so, it's wait, like so C, you wouldn't constant. you wouldn't write the number of times it would uh, iterate. It's some constant, not a function of oh, okay. it. Right? Oh, okay. Okay. So it doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. It's some constant amount of times. Right? Yeah. Sure. It's going to be ten, uh, hundred thousand. Can't see how many zeros. Yeah, hundred thousand. But it's, it's a constant. That's all that really matters. Right. So big O one is the way to write this. Um, okay. Uh, then we have uh, these code blocks here. Uh, sorry, wait, so how how would you conclude it's just log n from my way? Like from, like from, for this question here, this while loop question? I I would just see, I would just see that it's, yeah, it's just general trend that if you're multiplying by two, then the, if you're multiplying by two every time and you're waiting till some final n value that you're going up to, then it's going to be log base two of n. And if that was a three, it'd be log base three of n. That's all I was saying. Yes, they're they're individual. All these yellow blocks are individual. No, they're not connected. They're all separate. They're all separate. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at this one. So for the uh, int int sum equals zero for int i equals zero this will run n times and this inner loop will also run n times right and so um the complexity of this loop is n and the complexity of this loop is n and so together it'll they'll they'll both run so it'll be o n squared this is the general the general idea of this part is that if we have nested independent loops complexity of inner loop times the complexity of the outer loop so n times n Right. The complexity of this loop is n because it, it runs n times. Like this for loop will run n times because j goes from zero to n, right? And if it was like j goes from one to n, I, I, I'm pretty sure, not just pretty sure, like that is also uh, time complexity of n uh, because it doesn't matter. It's just a constant. Like it's just, you know, it still depends on n and not n squared and not log n. It still depends on n, right? So we have to. And the sum wouldn't play a role into the complexity right yeah there's no yeah yeah the sum doesn't play a role into the complexity it doesn't affect how many times we we run the the code right. yeah. um okay uh int i equals one j while i is less than equal to n j equals i while j is less than equal to j equals one i mean j is like less than equal to n okay so we multiply j by two every time so this looks a lot like big O log N here, right? That's correct. And this looks like big O N, right? Because uh, I should be clear, just because we're just adding one every time, right? So this will run N times. And so the whole thing has a complexity of N log N because whenever you have nested loops, you just multiply the complexities together. 
Uh, what if the inner loop is dependent on the outer one? Um, yeah, then you'll have to, let's see if there's an example like that. Uh, yeah, maybe this one? No, it's not an example. Um, yeah, then there would be some kind of uh, extra thing. What if the inner loop is dependent on the outer one? Or it might be the other way around. I think maybe the outer loop would be dependent on, no, that doesn't make sense. Maybe it does. You could have something in here that changes your I variable. I think that would just affect the complexity of the outer loop. Let's see if we have a question like that. Let's see if I can. Um, let's go through a couple more of these. So there we go. So we have, sorry, I don't know why it's gray. Oh, because I took a screenshot. Weird. Um, what if there's nested loops with conditional statements? What if it doesn't match the ending condition? I equals I times J or something ridiculous like that? Yeah, I agree. Uh, oh, hopefully not. <laughs> so what would happen? What would happen if we had, like, let's say we were here and we had a for loop. Let me just type it. It'll be easier to type. So if I, what, what if the complexity was four int I equals zero? Um, you're gonna have to forgive the autocorrect. I less than, I less than N, I plus plus. And we had, um, okay, so if it was just I times equals N or I times equals M, we know how to deal with that. It's like a log, right? If that's the log situation. But if we had an inner for loop, int J equals zero, J less than N, J plus plus, and then here we had I times equals, well, I'll say, I'll just write it actually as I equals I times J. What would the complexity of this be? I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm trying to, trying to think about what this would be. So how many times will, how many times will this loop run? Uh, Oh, yeah, that's 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 the main question. <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's the tricky part. <laughs> How many times will this loop run? Because zero, and then it'll go here, and you'll multiply i times zero, which is okay. So you'll be zero times zero, which is zero. And then you have zero times. Well, it'll go up until this will go up until i times n. Oh no, but you're multiplying, so it's like n factorial. There's gonna be factorials in here. There's going to be factorials in here. And well, because I'm thinking like J will go, J will become, I is constant in this for loop. Well, not constant, but I like, as in like this, I is not changing. We're not incrementing I, right? So I is not constant, but we're not incrementing I. We're just multiplying I by one and then two and then three and then four all the way to N. So we're multiplying, we're multiplying um, I by N factorial. Right, because one, two, three, four, five, da 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 da, end. Um, but uh, past that, I don't know if I have any more insight. It um, would be inf sorry, yeah. But I think the best way to solve these kind of complicated problems is just to like take take a number and actually just do it, like do the whole output thing and figure it out from there. So like choose some i, and choose and see what j has to be, and I guess choose some n is equal to like five or something. Yeah, like choose an N, which is like, I guess you don't even have to choose an N. Just start doing the thing and then uh, go all the way down to N, I guess. Just predict all the way down to N. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's see. Some of, a lot of people are saying it's an infinite loop. So uh, I times J equals zero, then I equals one, but J resets to zero. I times, zero. oh, okay, I see. Yeah, okay, let's, let's do that though. So, okay, so initially we have uh, I equal to zero. Right, and so then j equals to zero, and then immediately we do i times equals. But so then immediately after this, I'll just say this is like in the in the for loop is over here, and the second for loop is over here. So then we have i times. So we just have zero because it's gonna be zero times zero, right? And then we have zero times one, and then we have zero times two, then which is zero, and then zero times two, which is zero. So it'll just always be zero, and then so i is equal to zero. And then we increment i, though. 
Okay, but we increment i. So then i is now 1 after this, right? Well, I should be clear. After all of this first for loop, i is going to be 0. But then we increment it, so it's going to be 1 now. And we send it into this for loop, but j starts at 0. So j starts at 0, so it's just going to be 0 again. Um, and then, yeah, and then we're just going to have like, okay, here, this is, let's see what you said here. So, um, yeah. One sec. How is the j going to still be 0? Shouldn't it be 1? Because we have a j++. plus plus. Uh, j++, plus plus, yeah, but this reset, so once I, once this for loop finishes, right, then I go back up here, increment i, and do this again, but j starts at 0. No. Um, I don't think so. Because we, we're declaring for int i. Yeah. Yeah, am I getting am I getting confused? For int i equals zero. We're declaring this for loop. Okay. As long as we're declaring this for loop here, right? It's gonna run with i equal to zero through this for loop, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's going to you know, j is gonna become one, then two, then three, then four, all the way to n, right? And then we're gonna leave this for loop and then we're gonna go back up to this for loop and increment i. Right? We're gonna increment i. I is now one. And we go back here, and J goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, I get you. Okay, okay, I get so you. So it course. is an infinite loop. Though. It is an infinite loop. It is an infinite loop. Yeah, it is an infinite loop. Now, I, I, I could say 1 here, and then that would, cause, that would cause a little bit of problems, because then it wouldn't be an inf infinite loop, because we'd be doing 1. Well, yeah, yeah, we'd be doing 1 times 2. But, yeah. At this point... Uh, let's see what the chat's saying. Why does i reset at zero? Well, because i resets... Well, when i is zero, this will always be zero. Because it doesn't matter how many times you multiply zero by something, it's always going to be zero. But then when you increment i to one, if j were to start at zero, then you'd always be multiplying by zero at least once at the beginning, by, one, by zero. Like, you'd be multiplying by zero once at the beginning of this loop. And so the whole thing would be zero again. Yeah, I doesn't reset. Yeah, J resets. So here, we if we started at I equal to one, then what would happen? Um, let's see. If we started at I equal, uh, at J equal to one, I mean, sorry. So it would be zero the first run around. So we may as well just start I at one as well, because it doesn't matter. We may as well just start that at one as well. So now, um, it's one, so it's one times one, one times two, one times three, one times four. Uh, sorry, no, 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 that's, that's wrong. <laughs> one, one times one, which is one. One times two, which is two. Two times three, which is three, uh, which, is, <laughs> which is six. Um, so we have a factorial situation happening there, right? Um, so we essentially have, you're multiplying i by n factorial i times n factorial and then you have i incrementing so i guess it my guess is that this would be big o n factorial <laughs> because you'd get factorials in here and it would be like i times so you'd have some sort of starter amount you'd have like i equal to two let's say if i was two then it'd be two times n factorial because j is just going from just going from one to n right multiplying all those numbers so i think my answer is going to be big o n factorial I mean, nothing can really be bigger than n factorial, so it's probably right. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to say n factorial there. Obviously, we don't have to stress too much about this question, um, uh, but I think it's like, good to just like help us think about how we deal with the complexity of, of, of code like this. I don't know if that's the answer. Uh, I'll, I'll post on Reddit after and see if anybody responds. Um, so shouldn't it be big O n? Um, big O N, but it doesn't run N. Oh no, but does it run N times? Yeah, actually, hold on. Maybe it would be that. Actually, N factorial doesn't actually make that much sense. The output I, I becomes I times equals. Oh, yeah, actually, this is a lot simpler than actually I realized, I think now, because so yeah, so the, the output of the of i 
like what i is going to be equal to by the end of this is n factorial but actually the complexity of how many times i was thinking about the wrong thing I'm, we have to think about how many times will the code run so this will run once this will run n times and after all of that you are going to have one times n factorial right and n factorial is is looking at this inequality here right n factorial is less than n is never true i don't think ever uh yeah i don't think it's ever true so this will this header will literally run once okay maybe twice check but that's it so constant time and then you'll have this run n times so it will be big o n so i've changed my answer now to big o n yeah big o n so once again the output will be a factorial right the output of i will be a factorial here but that will instantly be bigger than n right so yeah let me let me explain that i'm sure that's a lot so let me let me uh paste it here again so we just want to ask ourselves how many times will each of these loops run right separate loops how many times will each of these loops run so let's say we go into the for loop once here with i equal to one right then this for loop right we go we go into the first for loop with i equal to one this for loop will run n factorial times right uh, We'll run n times, not n factorial. We'll run n times <laughs> um, because j is less than n. i, after all this, i will be equal to 1 times n factorial because you're doing 1 times 1, one and then that answer times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5, right? All the way to n. So I'll just say i is equal to n factorial here, right? n factorial, checking this condition for the next time that we're going to do this outer loop, n is less than, n factorial is less than n that's never true right instantly n factorial is bigger than n and so here we have this oh yeah is this something similar to what we're doing right now uh sum plus equals uh no that's okay actually what what that example you have there 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 they're just multiplying i times j to get to get the sum that's not actually changing what i and j are right i and j, like the thing we're doing here is we're actually changing we're setting i in the inner for loop but anyway so n factorial is instantly bigger than n so this outer loop will run in constant time it'll run once and then this will run n times so the whole thing is complexity n that makes sense big o n. well that makes sense okay good i'm happy this makes sense now it is interesting a lot simpler of a solution than i expected now what if we did j j times i um well, I got to try it. I got to try it. <laughs> Let's just think about it for a second. I won't spend an hour thinking about this one, but uh, what if we did, what if we did, <laughs> what if we did uh, J, J times I, I'll, I'll write it actually how you wrote it just because I want to see here. So now I is going to be one. So then we're just setting J multiply it by one multiply by one multiply by one it'll never stop i don't think oh no but j is incrementing so this will run n times this will run n times when j when i is equal to one right because essentially then you're just saying j equals j and that's fine when i is equal to two it's going to be times two so then it's going to be okay okay so it's going to be this will run i think log n times when i is equal to sorry when i is equal to two because then you're multiplying by two every time here so it's going to be it'll be log base one of n log, so this is you can think about this like log base one of n right so i think the base of the log so i think the complexity how many times that will run is the sum i uh let's just say r goes from a, a one to n of log base r of n right uh and uh is that n log n <laughs> uh because it's going to be log base one log base two it's big o log n log n i think it's big o n log n because this is going to be log base one of n plus log base two of, oh no, 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 but the bases are changing. Uh, plus log base three of n plus dot 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 plus 
log base n of of n. So, well, we have n here. <laughs> so, if I set if I increase the base to n, if I decrease it, why do you say it has to be big O n? Because n is greater than log n. n is greater than log n. Because outer loop is just n. Okay, okay, okay. I think I'm yeah. trying to say that we have at least one single n, and then there are so many different log n's with different bases that are increasing. Yeah. But still, we have an n in the equation, so I think it should be a o. I'm not sure. So, so you're saying, yeah, so you're saying, oh, okay, okay. So this log base n of n is 1, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And this is, okay, and, and log base 1 of n is n. 1 to the power of... No. No, 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 the n, the n time, like we're going to have, I, when i is equal to 1, we're going to have the whole thing happening n times, correct? Uh, yeah, you're right. So we have You're right, so this doesn't actually n. have to be there. Yeah, 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 yeah. The log base 1 of n is not that. Yeah, and then yes. n as a complexity is much greater than all the other ones. Like, okay. because we still have a constant, we have logarithmic, yeah. and then we have the linear logarithmic, or whatever it's called, and then the linear. So I think, but I'm not sure if, um, I don't know. <laughs> so, no, no, I understand what you mean. So you're saying the complexity of this inner for loop should be n because n is greater than the complexity of all of these, regardless of their bases, right? Regardless of whatever base it is, the, n is going to have a greater complexity. And then this has a complexity of n as well. So I think it shouldn't be n squared then in total because this will run n times, times n, n for this one. So shouldn't it be n squared? Because this 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 top loop has complexity n, and then we're saying this has big O n, right? Complexity big O n, so so I think it should be n squared. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gonna make sense. Yeah. Big O n squared. Okay, so I think we'll we'll say big O n squared. Um. Okay, I, it'd be nice if we could verify these answers somehow, but I think I think it's nice to have some sort of a, you know, just we'll discuss it and we'll figure it out. Um, but. Hopefully this is helpful to kind of help think about these things. It's great, great suggestions. Ethan, you don't have to say just kidding to good questions. It's good. It's good. <laughs> They're good questions. Um, okay, great. So we have done these ones. So let's let's just finish a couple of these. Uh, there's not. Uh, it was actually it was a it was a good amount left. But let's do these because you know I think they're worth our time. Uh, let's just see. Did I finish this one? Yeah, I finished this one. Oh, no. Did I finish this one? No, I did not. So this one. Uh, no, I did do this one, didn't I? No, I didn't, I guess. What's the difference? This goes. Oh, OK, OK, OK. So uh, again, uh, is there anything? Yeah, determining complexity of code structures. Sorry? Oh, no, I don't know if Simon said something there. OK. Um, so the uh, for int i equals one i less than n i plus plus this will run n times right. Uh, Adam, where will you post the recording? I will post it on my YouTube channel and I will post it in uh, tutor announcements on this server. Tutor announcements there. No problem. Um, so uh, we have now we have now uh, this will run n times. Okay, this is something someone said before. What happens if we have dependent loops? So this is a dependent loop because this second loop depends on the first loop, right? We have i as part of our uh, condition here. Right? So let me look at the answer just to make sure I know what I'm saying. Um, so here we have uh, this loop will run n times. This loop, right? This loop in here. Well, for i, uh, for j equals one, j is less than or equal to i. So when i is equal to one this will run once. When i is equal to two, this will run twice. When i is equal to three, this will run three times, right? So this will run one plus two plus three plus four plus dot 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 n times, right? That's how many times it will run because i goes up to n. So it's going to be n times this, 
right? n times the sum of all the numbers up to n. Um, because because this happens n times up here. No, 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 sorry, is that true? No, no, that's not true. We have accounted for the fact that this happens n times already because there's n of them here, right? Um, and and so, yeah, and then the sum of the first n terms is n, like Ethan just said there, n, n plus 1 over 2, which is big O n squared. So, there we go. So the whole thing is big O n squared. Yeah, I was thinking that too. I'm thinking that too, Ethan. But the answer is n squared. And I think we already... Number of repeti... I think it might be n cubed. Like, that does make sense what you're saying. I thought it was n cubed at first too. Because I was going to multiply this by n. But it's not like it happens... Like... Only the... one of the loops is dependent on n. Right? Not both of them. Yeah, only one of the loops is dependent on n. So each time and each time i increases, um, the uh, second the, the nested loop would run one more time, right? If, one more time. If, That's why I have the if sum. If i goes this. up by one, then the loop will go one more time. So it's it should already be accounted for. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with that as well. Like I was thinking that since this happens n times. Then it's already accounting for the fact that it's n. But I, I, like I have, I had the feeling at first. I said, "Oh, multiplies by n," which would make it n cubed. Um, but yeah, so I guess, I guess, I guess it does make sense that it's n squared, just because this loop is not directly dependent on n. It is some, you know, constant amount of time um, that keeps going up to n. Okay, there's that one. Let's try this next one. Uh, int sum equals zero for int i equals one i less than n i plus plus okay so first of all this is complexity n then we have j is equal to i j is less than zero j plus plus so this will run i times i think it'll be the same thing won't it no it won't be the same thing <laughs> so number of repetitions let's look at how many let's see how many repetitions we have of this inner loop here Right, so when i equals one, right? Um, oh, j less than zero. Well, uh, one is not one is not less than zero, so this won't run. Yeah, so this won't th this loop won't run here. So it's just going to be a constant amount of time to do the checking, and so this whole thing is big O n. So it'll it'll just never run. This this uh, sorry, like it'll check, but it'll never actually run the sum, right? Because any number i is always bigger than zero. So the whole thing is just n. I would have at first not said that, but I see why it is now. Any questions about this one? Why that's big O n? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the j is always going to be greater than zero. Yeah. So we would never be able to go um, into this loop. This yeah. Exactly. And like, so for one single iteration it takes a constant amount of time, but since we're going up to n, that's why it's all n because it's you multiply it. Have a you multiply these two. N. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, one more thing. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So when we have a dependent nested loop, um, we have to do it the way above. Like, just consider each iteration each full iteration by itself and then just keep on adding up to i think that's right that seems right to me yeah yeah okay. that's a way to do it like if, it, mm -hmm. if it's not a nested loop uh, i'm sorry no if it's not a dependent nested loop then you should just find the complexity of the outer complexity of the inner multiply and that's it yeah but if they're dependent then you have to sort of under try to try to account for how many times will the dependent one run will the the one that's exactly. dependent on the other one run okay perfect. and add that all together Sounds great. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's do another example. Uh, this one. Look at here. So this one, int n is equal to a hundred for int i equals one i less than n i plus plus. So again, you know, this is of course. Oh, sorry. Actually, <laughs> um, so n is equal to a hundred. <laughs> so a hundred, a hundred. This is all constant time. The whole thing's constant time. N is a constant. N is not a variable. So, that's it. That's the whole thing. 
Um, let's look at the next one. The next one here. So int n, do, scanner object, next int. So this whole beginning part doesn't matter. This is this right here is not part of code complexity. Like how many times will this run? This is how many times. So, so it's pretty much just scanning from the user um, an integer. And it's just checking, is that integer uh, less than or equal to zero? Um, and that will run however many times it takes the user to input the right number. So there's no like code complexity there. It doesn't matter. This is where the code complexity is. So just assuming we have some sort of, what we get from this green section is that we have some n, n less than equal to zero. That's what we know. n is less than equal to zero. Um, so now um, we have, uh, or sorry, no, no, no. We know, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm, I'm misread that. Greater than zero. <laughs> Greater than zero. So it repeats if n is less than equal to zero. It repeats it. But once n is greater than zero, then we leave. So now we know we have an n greater than zero. That's what we know from this. So um, int sum equals zero, whatever, for int i equals one, i less than n, i plus plus. So this is complexity n. This is complexity n. So this whole thing is complexity o n squared. And that's it. Oh, j equals i. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, so j equals i. So uh, this will run uh, one time on, sorry, this will run n times on the first one. So okay, this, this one will run n times and then it will run n minus one times and then it will run n minus two times, right? Because you just keep, i just keeps going up, right? Until eventually it will run n minus n minus one times until it runs n minus n times. So um, there are n of these in total. Each term contains an n, so it's n squared, right? Because each term contains an n, right? Uh, uh, and uh, there's n of them. So n times n is n squared. And that's it. And that's the one. Uh, for the previous question, the answer would be big O n squared if 100 was replaced by n. Let's see. Uh, yes. Yeah, that makes sense. It would be n squared. Okay, let's look at the next one. So, uh, uh, why is it n minus 1? Like, why is this n minus 1 here? Is that what you mean? Or why is this n minus one? Oh, here? Okay. So, I mean, essentially, right, this this is n minus zero, n minus one, n minus two. Just what, okay, I guess it starts at one. So, I guess it starts here, actually. n minus one, because it'll go, it doesn't really matter where it starts. It'll just go, you know, one less than n times, right? Because i equals one, so it'll go from i to n, right? So, maybe it'll start on n, actually, n, n times. <laughs> and then, when i equals two, it'll go one less times. That's what I'm trying to say here. When i equals two, if you bring i up by one, it's going to start, j is going to start one higher up into the list. And so it's going to go one less time and then another less time and then another less time. Da, 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 da. Oh, I'm sorry. There should be plus plus dot 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 here. Plus plus dot dot dot. Um, and so uh, until eventually it's going to be n, but right before that it's n minus one. I just wanted to show it's n minus one. And then you have that. Okay. Uh, let's look at the question here. So int x equals new int 100. So we have a variable x, which is a array of 100 integers. Um, for int i equals zero, i less than x dot length, um, i plus plus, da, 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 da. this is all big O one. Just a constant. There's no variable of length, right? We just, this runs 100 times. This loop runs 100 times. That's it. Next one. Um, then we have, uh, there's a good amount of other ones, so I don't know if we'll do all of them, but let's just try a couple more here and see where we get. So, uh, here. we'll just look at the addition roll one next and then that'll probably be it. Okay. 
So no plan. They go in. Okay. Int n. Int x, new hundred integers. This is not printl n. Enter number of elements, scan next int. Okay, so collect a hundred uh, n is less than one or n is greater than a hundred. Uh, what does this mean? So the numbers have to be less than one or greater than a hundred and that's when it'll run. So when you're out of here, you'll know so that there- Isn't it a do while loop though? Wouldn't it be, you, you keep, keep entering stuff until- Yeah, 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 yeah. You keep entering stuff. So I guess we know all of the numbers are between zero and a hundred. That's what it's trying to show here. No, is that what it's trying to show here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think all of the numbers, all the numbers in this array are between zero and a hundred. Okay. Um, int sum equals zero for int. Oh. Oh, it's just it's just n. That's the whole thing. It's just big. O, it's just big O n. There you go. There's nothing else. Nothing else. That that top part doesn't matter. Just, just it filling. Filling it up. Weird though, because it is a variable. We don't know how many times the person will enter elements. Less than a hundred. Less than a hundred times. I, but we don't know that it's not. We it's not a constant. It isn't it variable? Um. Like, even if it's a hundred, like we don't know what the number will be ahead of time. Um. Well, let's just say it was 100, and then it's a constant. I think you could just... Because this complexity here depends on... Well, d depends on user input, but the maximum it can is 100. That is the maximum that it can run. Not a function of... Not a function of n, right? n, we, we don't even know n. n is what here? n is the last entered one, the most recent entered one. Yeah, n is a constant. n must be between 1 and 100. n must be between 1 and 100. So the whole thing... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see why you're saying O1. So that means we're disagreeing with the solution here, but I do see why you're saying that. So the solution here says loop 1. What's loop 1? This is loop one. Loop one is big O n if the loop terminates. Otherwise, its complexity cannot be determined. N is a variable. Hence, loop two is big O n. That's not true though if we're assigning n. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're not even, sorry, sorry. This doesn't run a hundred times. Sorry, I, I, I misread that. We're not, I thought this was inside there, or we're assigning some sort of xi. xi never gets assigned anything. Like the, the int, the x array never, never gets, we never assign what it is. Am I, unless I'm, it's in front of me, I can't see it. We never, this is always nulls or zeros if it is initialized as zero, but. Um, I think that's kind of irrelevant. I think we just pretend there's something in there and we're printing it out. Where we pretend there's something in in this array? Yeah, yeah, in the array. I guess so. But I yeah. think it's big O n just because that we're, we're running the loop n times and we don't know what n is going to be anyways. Um, but are we running it? n is the variable that the user is inputting, right? n is that variable. n isn't like a... Like, that's a constant. That's a number that the user is inputting between 0 and 100. Right? Because the n is scan or object in next int, and it has to be between 0 and 100. But, like, it happens n times, right? Like, it happens whatever number n is. This loop. This loop here. Yeah, yes, this loop, loop here two. happens whatever. Yeah, this happens however many times n is. Okay, so I guess... Okay, so I guess the conclusion is that from this code, from this code, we get some n. It's a variable. It is less than 100, for sure. Um, it's less than 100. But anyways, it's less than 100. So 
Well, just be how did I get that for loop? Because it's just like, it's just some n. Like we've just assigned, what I mean is just like we've assigned n. Not that this runs n times, but I just mean from this, we get the value of n. Right? It's just some n value, right? Between one and a hundred. And so it can't be more than a hundred because uh, if n was 101, right? Then it would restart the loop here because n is great. 101 is greater than a hundred. So it would ask you to reput the thing. So what if the user kept entering 1000, then this would run as many times as the user input 1000. So N has to be maximum 100, between one and 100. Yeah, so the, wait, complex wait. the complexity of this is not N, but we get some N value out of it after, it's, after the person's done asking. Yeah, sorry, you were gonna say something? No, for the do loop, uh, what was the complexity? Uh, in the answer, uh, uh, the complexity is n if it terminates. Otherwise, it cannot be determined. So if you keep entering a thousand, yeah. then it, you can't determine the complexity. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Right. But if you, we do enter, let's say, but that, that doesn't make sense to say it's n. Like, what if I just enter five? If I just enter five, that while loop will run once. That's not a function of n. It doesn't run five times or whatever. It doesn't run N times. I, it feels like this, the complexity of this is just constant. It should just be big O one, a big O one because I don't think the user dependent info like this can be considered and get the first solution to the problem. I agree to say that the user dependent info cannot be considered, but it actually says in the solution loop one is big O N if it terminates. Otherwise it cannot be determined. You can't get the first complexity because you're by the user input and not back. Yeah, yeah. Like I agree with what you're saying, but it, it does it does have it in the thing here. It says loop one is big O N if the loop terminates, otherwise it cannot be determined. You know it's getting crazy when Discord says several people typing instead of just the names. <laughs> I think they mean the whole thing is big O one if it terminates. That makes sense to say it's big O one if it terminates. Yeah, I yeah yeah yeah. I I don't agree that it's big O n. I don't I don't, I can't explain to you why it's big O n. Yeah, I I think it's called, uh, big O one. I think it's big O one. Um and then, and then this runs n times and so the whole thing has complexity of n well n uh, i goes from zero to n n is always a specific value right but it's just will run n times it is some specific value okay yeah yeah, yeah. it's not as i'm taught it. it is less than 100 that's something that's bugging me too. It's le it, we know it's less than a hundred. So since we know it's less than a hundred, it feels like this should just, we should just call this constant time too. And we just say the whole thing is constant time. It really feels like the whole thing should be constant time. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, it feels but, like the whole thing. The hundred doesn't have anything to do with the number of times looping, right? It doesn't have anything to do with the number of times looping. It has it has to do with the number of times this for loop will loop though, because maximum one hundred times. N can max at maximum be one hundred. Oh yeah. Right? So it does affect it does affect how many times this will loop. Right. I'd say we move on. <laughs> let's just move on. Um let's do Oh Siri started <laughs> talking. Um let's let's move on let's do there's another rule i just want to go through like all the rules um uh, the second loop can't be big o one let's say the user inputs five then the loop will run five times like yeah that makes sense and that is a function of n but like asymptotically asymptotically we say like as n goes to infinity and doesn't go to infinity and goes to 100. That is the maximum n can be. That's the thing. If, if this condition wasn't there, I would say this is big O n. Absolutely. But the condition that n is at maximum 100 makes me feel like it should be 
uh, not 100, not, not big O n, it should be big O one because it's just a constant. Uh, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's move on. I'd say we have a lot of other things to do. So let's do a couple more just to get the rules, all the rules down. Let's see how many more rules are there. One, uh, oh, there's a good, good amount of other rules. <laughs> so I think, uh, uh, wait, I mean, sorry, 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 Adam, I yeah. just realized something. Can you scroll up for a second? Yeah. In this one, it says n is greater than 100. So n could be anything. That's when that's when it repeats. It repeats if n is greater than 100. That's when it asks for another user input. Right? If n is less than 1 or n is greater than 100, then the while loop will repeat. And it'll ask for a new user input until um, the oh, okay, my bad. The n value is neither. You. Yeah. So it's going to be bounded by 1 or not. OK. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem, no problem. It's all good. Yeah. Can I say something quick? Yeah, of course, of course. So, whenever the the user has an input which is less than one or greater than a hundred, it's going to keep on taking an input. Yes. And that's why we said it's an order n. Uh, why is it? No, no, I I didn't say that this. I don't think this is order n. This is order however many times it takes the user to input. Right. Which is not yeah. a function of n. It's just n is not even a variable at this point like n is what you're assigning the number to right n is like the variable we get out of this right correct yeah right so if this is just you can't determine it it's just like however long the user takes to input a number between one and a hundred that makes sense and what if they do actually input something that it's still going to be o one uh yeah if they input something then it takes one try right then it's constant it's just like it's just that you just do it it just goes once Correct, but for the for loop, shouldn't it happen oh. like from i equals zero to n? Yeah. Okay. So then you're saying this should be n here. You're saying this should be big O n. Yes. If yeah. we reach to the second one. Yeah. If we reach the second one, the the reason, like that makes sense. The reason I'm a little iffy on that is because n has to be less than a hundred, right? N is not like n is not some n random big number. N has to be between one and a hundred, so. Let's just pretend, let's just say worst case scenario, it's 100, and then it's constant time. Like that's the longest this will take to run is if that's 100 and that's constant time. The longest it will take to run is one, is, is big O one. Uh, okay. Do you see what I mean by that? Yes. Like that's the worst case scenario is that N is 100 and that's still constant. So is yeah, because as soon as you get into the while loop, it's just going to happen once because you already assured whatever is in the do, in the, like yeah. the do part. I already took an input and it's between 1 to 100. So as soon as it gets into the while, it just uh, it, the whole thing happens once and that's it. Yeah, like as soon as, as soon as we enter something that is, yeah, yeah. As soon as we enter an n value between 1 and 100, then this mm -hmm. will just run that one time and then it will leave it. And then now we're here, not inside the while. The while loop is like this. The do while is like this part up here. But then we have here is this loop here is going to run n times, but n is maximum 100. So it seems like it's constant to me. That's the, that's the idea of that. Okay. And one last thing. Yes. Um, so when we say n is equal to scanner object dot next int, this is like whatever I'm inputting is being stored in n. So yes. how is n exactly a value? Uh, how is n like, what do you mean? How is n a value? Like how is n uh, like, like a yeah. input? So like whatever we just have as the next int, it takes whatever integer is written yeah. and it stores it in n. In n, yeah. So, the, um, so how I think about it is that below above this above this line it's just about getting n, right? Getting some n value, right? And then below this line we have some fixed n value below this line, right? Some fixed n value. Um, but you know more specifically, like if that if that's all we knew that it, if this whole section wasn't there, then I would say this is big O n. But because specifically this part that we know n can only be as you know it can only be ninety nine actually. Right, then oh no no it can be it can be hundred but uh, we know it can only be that high. 
it must just be this runs a constant amount of time. It runs at worst 100 times. That's the idea. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's try, let's try this one. What do you guys want to do? Would you like to keep doing um, this for another, you know, 15, 20 minutes, something like that? Or would you like to start doing recurrences? Like recurrent stuff and like, uh, yeah. That's what I mean, recur recurrence. So there are, okay, do this example, move on. I think it's, that might be a good one. Um, yeah, that might be a good idea. Just do this example and move on. Uh, there's a lot of other rules. So I'd recommend looking through the rules, of course, before tomorrow. Um, I'll add them to my notes. I don't actually have them properly in my notes. So. Um, let's just do this example quickly. Big O, S, da, da, da. So if you have a bunch of statements, use the addition rule. So um, you just take the maximum of the whole thing. So this is big O, N squared. This is big O, big O, N. So the maximum is going to be n squared. So the whole thing's n squared. So yeah, there we go. So whenever you have completely separate code chunks, uh, when, you know, uh, uh, you just want to take the maximum. It makes sense. Oops. Let's keep moving. When it's not nested. Yeah, that's what I mean by completely separate. Yeah, when it's not nested, you just take the maximum of the two. Okay, guys, let's try, um, let's try some recurrence. Uh, can't promise anything of how good I'm going to be able to do this. Um, but let's try our best. Um, so the difference is that there are statements between the for loops. Yeah, and, and the difference is that a for loop is not within another for loop. They're separate from each other, right? They're just separate blocks of code. And so the complexity of the whole thing will be n squared. Okay. Uh, let's try, let's try this. Use mathematical induction to prove this. Let's see how it goes. I mean, this is not something crazy. Like this, this isn't too bad. Um, so we show, first of all, we show a base case, right? So I'm going to choose N is equal to one, right? Um, and then it's going to be the sum R goes from one to one of R. Well, that's of course just going to be one. And so, uh, let's just check if that matches with our formula, right? This should. Uh, I don't know, does this equal to, I'll put the little question mark there. Is this equal to one times one plus one over two? Yes, it is. So base case successful because two over two is one. There we go. Um, so now we make our um, inductive, inductive hypothesis, hypothesis, okay. So the inductive hypothesis is we assume that this is true for some, um, uh, for sum n equal to k, right? We assume that this is true, that it's it's true that the sum r goes from one to k uh, of r is equal to um, uh, k, k, k plus one over two. We assume this is true. And we uh, imply from this, we see if we can show that this is also true for n equal to k plus one. And this is called the, uh, in in uh what's the word <laughs> inductive uh i forget the word some inductive step i'll call it inductive step uh inductive step how do i know what the base case is um uh well well it can't be anything lower you just want to choose a low value for n um so you know, like some sort of like something you want to choose a, a case that's like almost trivially true like not just almost is trivially true so for example the sum of one is one right so you would just set n equal to one you could set n equal to zero um well you can't actually set n equal to zero because then r goes from one to zero that doesn't make sense right uh you can't choose zero you could choose two if you wanted to choose two but why well, yeah, there's no need to choose two so there you go inductive step we show now show that the following is true, that the sum r goes from one to k plus one of r is equal to k plus one, k plus two over two. Well, k plus one plus one over two. Um, 
which I'll, which I'll just write as k plus 2. Okay, so um, in doing this, we need to show that this is true using uh, this, using the fact that we know that this is true. Um, so the way we do this, I'm going to try to remember how we did this. Um, let me look at my notes again. I have, I have it written down how I did it before. So let me find it. Uh, here it is. So Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay. K plus one, K plus one, two. Okay. So the way we do this is we say that this this the sum uh this sum <laughs> is equal to the sum R goes from one to K of R plus K plus one right? Plus k plus 1. That's a, that's because it's the sum of the first k elements, right? I mean, using just up to k, and then you just have k plus 1 being substituted in here one more time at the end, right? Um, so then at this point, we know that that is equal to k, k plus 1 over 2 plus k plus 1. And at this point, we just have to show that this is equal to this. Right, so we just say uh, k, k plus one plus two, k plus one. I'm sorry, my k's are horrible, but I'll probably read it. k squared plus k plus two k plus two over two, k squared plus three k plus two over two, um, and this, that factors into k plus one, k plus two over two. And there we go. So we showed that this is equal to this by using this. So you have to use your inductive hypothesis because it, this has to imply the result that we're trying to show. So we showed this by taking, by saying this is equal to this, right? And then just rearranging that into that. Okay. One success, one induction success here. Any questions about how we did induction on this one? Sadly, I think this is the simplest example, and it's 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 not it's not super easy. But... Okay. Uh, can you just scroll up for a sec? Sorry. Yeah. A little higher? Is that good? Uh, yeah. That was, I just need to see what you're saying. It's a bit lower. Yeah, that's good. What's the thought process behind the step for adding the k plus one term to prove? Well, I need to get this. I need to get, somehow I need to be able to use this expression. So either I have to turn this side into something like this, which, which I actually could do, but that's a little harder. Not just a little, that's quite a bit harder to do, right? Like I could start m manipulating this, right? I could foil this and get this side, right? And then use this, or I could try to turn the, this side into this or try to sorry try to represent this side using this side right and that's a little bit easier to do compared to this well i mean it's easier to do once you know how to do it <laughs> but um you know if, if, if this is on a test what i'm saying is that you could also just like foil this this would just be uh k squared plus 3k plus 2 then you could say okay well k uh, over 2 obviously and you could say k squared plus k uh, k squared plus k plus two k plus two. You could say, okay, this is what's going to be. The reason I would try to do this is because I want to I want to um, factor a k out of this. So th what I'm showing right now is a way to do it without having to make this assumption. So you you do this right here. You you, you go from this, foil it, then from this here, this step here, you're going to go k k plus one plus two k plus 2, or you don't have to factor the 2 out there, uh, so just 2k plus 2, like that, uh, over 2, and the reason you want to do this is because, look, now, over 2 plus 2k plus 2, now you have this expression, and so you can say that, um, uh, oh, and then you're kind of back at the start, <laughs> uh, so then, <laughs> then you, you have this expression, so then you can substitute that in, you can make this assumption that this is the sum, uh, R goes from one to K 
of r plus 2, oh, sorry, that's supposed to be over 2 here, 2, but I'll just divide by 2, so it's k plus 1 here, um, and then you'd have to recognize this again to make this equal to the sum, so you can't avoid it. I thought you could avoid it, you cannot avoid it. So you have to recognize that this this is equal to the sum, and then you've proved it inductively again, but but not not without in avoiding this. So it looks like you do have to use this term. Um, yeah. Um, Question. Yeah. So this like made it more clear, but when it like for for instance, we had a question in like one of the lectures and. Uh, it was using the merge sort, and then you use the base case as two instead of one. Do you know why? Uh, like this is all, like this is completely different from this question. Or yeah, I, I have to see the go? question. We can do the question. We can try the question. Uh, yeah. What lecture was it from? Mm, six, five. Let me check. Okay. So, yeah. Take a second. Find the find the question there. And then we'll do it. How about in the meantime, let's just do a quick recursive tree, and then and then yeah, when uh, when uh, when you're done there, we'll do that. Like tell tell me when you found the the exact question. Um, so let's do this recursive tree here. Find the height of the tree for n is equal to two to the power of i. So we're assuming n is some big power of i. Um, uh, I need more information on this, don't I? Okay. I I technically need more information than this, but um, we're just going to assume that t of 1 is the base case, and t of 1 is equal to, well, whatever. t of 1 is the base case. That's what I mean. Um, so uh, the way you do this is just to find the height. You just want to know how far down we go. So every time it's t of n over 2 to the 0, uh, n over 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2. So you know, let's say this, this goes i times. We want to find i, right? Or I can't use i, sorry. I can't use i. Um, so let's say this goes k, k times, and I, I want to find k, right? So I'm going to say that um, uh, k occurs. So this is um, this is uh, zero, one, two, right? So this is the uh, one, yeah. So then in general, this is n over two to the k, right? That's what's going to be. Well, it's going to be t of n over two to the k. We want to know when is that the base case. So when is n over 2 to the k equal to 1, right? In other words, when, that's a k there, by the way. When is n equal to 2 to the k, or which is when k is equal to log, log n. And so there we go. You just assume t of 1. Yes, I did just assume t of one is the base case. He did that. In the, he did that in the in the solution too. So it, it's not explicitly stated anywhere, but but that must be what they mean. Um, uh, there's something in the chat here. Um, uh, oh, since probably meant. Squared. What is the answer to this question? Squared. I don't know if say as in this, in this, in this here. Um, um, so what is the, what is the answer for this question? Uh, this question here, question two, uh, log n. That's the height. Oh, I didn't assume, oh, n equals 2 to the i. Sorry, n equals 2 to the i. So I can say k, n equals 2 to the i. I didn't use that at all. So shouldn't the height be i then? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, hold on. Let me check the, <laughs> i equals log n. No, they said i equals log n. n equals 2 to the i. Yeah, I didn't use that. And honestly, he didn't use that in the solution either. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, that makes sense what you're saying, Ethan. But, but that's not the height. Like, I is not the height. It asks for find the height of the tree, which, which is log n. 
for n equals 2 to the i, okay, then it's equal to i. But that's not the solution. The, the solution is i equals log n. I just labeled it differently. Um, so here they're saying it goes i times, so it's going to be 2 to the i, and so then it's going to be 2 to the i, and so then it's going to be 2 to the i, and so then it's going to be i. That's all it is. I just, I just labeled it. Log n. Log n is the height. Log n is the height. That's what the height is. But generally, how these questions work, it's just a label. It's just how we labeled it. It's just being confusing. Just how these questions work is you just um, find the uh, pattern in the argument in terms of the number of recursive calls. Uh, set that equal to the argument of the base case. So the argument of the base case is one. So you just said that. But isn't log n equal to i or is that incorrect? Log n is equal to i. Yes, log n is equal to i. No, the height is log n. The height is log n. If you set log n equal to i, you just have i equals i. Which isn't helpful. Are recursive trees like a more organized way of doing repeated substitution? Uh, a, a repeated substitution. Well, they're essentially just a more organized way of figuring out the complex the the cost of each recursive call. But yeah, I guess so. Doing repeated substitution. Yeah. But log. I had a quick question. Yeah, yeah, go for it. So, what is the base case actually referring to? Just when does the recursive call stop? Oh, okay. Because this is going to be n over four, n over. Eight and over sixteen, and it's going to stop some point, right? So, oh, so I think saying that n equals two to the i, n equals two to the i, is just saying that n is going to be a power of two. So these are all going to be whole numbers in here. These are all going to be whole numbers in here. Okay, like these, it doesn't matter that we're dividing by two here. Like it's going to be a whole number. Okay, because n is a power of two, um, and honestly. Height just means, so like this, these recursive calls are going to keep calling, keep calling. This is going to have two. 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 They're 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 gonna, we're just looking at how many layers deep are you going? And so I'm just going to say, it's going to end after I iterations, right? It's going to end after I iterations. And it's going to stop when the argument inside here is the base case, right? When N over two to the I, because this is N over n over 2 to the 0, n over 2 to the 1, n over 2 to the 2, n over 2 to the i in general. We want to stop when that is equal to 1, because 1 is the base case here. I think the height is supposed to be in terms of n. Yeah, that's why we can't use i. Yes, the height is supposed to be in terms of n. That's merge sort. Uh, I don't know. Is it merge sort? Yeah, that's the same. Uh, looks like merge sort. Yeah, looks like merge sort. Okay, it's okay. Um, base case is not given, but he assumes it in the question. So I'm going to assume it too. To you. That's the base case. Yeah, base case is not given, which I'm sure it is given in the test. But in the solution, he also assumes the base case is one, so I'm going to assume the base case is one. Okay. Merge is n log n though. Merge is n log n. Yeah, yeah. And so merge is n log n because, well, we don't know enough about this to say this, but m like we don't know this is merge sort because we don't know what the what the non-recursive cost is. But assuming the non-recursive cost is linear, right? So then we have n, 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 n. Each row has a cost of n. And so it's going to be a cost of n, well, cn, cn, cn. And how many of them are there? There's log n of them. So in total, the cost is n log n. That's assuming the non-recursive cost is n. But we don't actually know that. That's not even what the question was asking for, right? Um, but yeah, if this is merge sort, then the non-recursive cost is n, it's linear. And so then the whole thing will be n log n. Okay, let's try this question. We won't go for too much longer, guys, because it is getting late. But let's let's try a couple more. Let's just see what's 
we can figure it out. Um, and then I'd, I'd okay, so let's try number four and number five. Number five is an induction one that I do not know how to do. So uh, let's, let's try number four. I think I, I know how to do this one. Um, Use recursive tree to guess the type big O complexity of the following recurrence formula, TN3. Da, 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 da. Okay. So first of all, the base case is T of one equals one. That's the base case. Second of all, our non-recursive part is just N. Okay. So if I start, um, if I start the tree here, let me make sure I'm doing the right thing. Uh, yeah. If I start the tree here, we have our first call, which is T of N, right? That's our first call at the beginning of the tree. Then from that, we are going to have three calls to T of N over two. T of N over two. T of N over two. And what we do, once we make that call, we replace the original call with the non-recursive part. And then we do it again. This will be T of n over four now, but I'll just call it two squared, right? n over four, because n over two is now what you're putting into it, and n over two over two is n over four. But we're gonna have three of these as well, the exact same thing. So t n over two squared, t n over two squared, and then the same thing here. Let's just copy instead of doing it a bunch of times. Let's just no. Why did you do that? Why did you do that one note? Come on. There we go. So just uh, it's gonna get a little messy if I do that. So I'll put that one there, and then uh, uh, and then one, two, three, same thing, right? Uh, t blah blah blah, t blah blah blah, t blah blah. Same thing as we have before. And this will continue. This will have three. This will have three. This will have three. This will have three. This will have three, and this will have three. Okay, it'll keep going. So we gotta just understand what the cost complexity is. The cost of this row is n, right? Oh, sorry, I was supposed to replace it. So the cost, now I put the, um, I replace the call with the actual non-recursive cost. So this is n over two, right? n over two, n over two, non-recursive cost, n over four, 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 n over four. And over four, and over four, and and over four. There we go. Yeah, honestly, I I I have not studied the master method because I he's not being tested on it. So I I was just like, I will learn it myself later, but I can't do it at this moment. Um, possibly if someone has done the master method, then uh, feel free to say something there. Uh, the cost of this is n. The cost of this row is three n over two. The cost of this next row is nine n over four. And so, you know, not too much to see a pattern, but you know, this is where K equals one. This is where K equal, uh, sorry, this is where K equals zero. This is where K equals one. This is where K equals two, right? K is the depth that we're in, right? The depth that we're into this, um, the recursive calls. So uh, this will happen, uh, N is N, whatever. Uh, okay, actually N is, three over two to the power zero times n. This is three over two to the power of one times n. This is three over two to the power of two times n. So after k calls, it's going to be three over two to the power of k times n, right? And then you take the sum of all of these, right? You take the sum of all of these. And so we're doing the sum, r goes from uh, zero, to something, I don't I haven't decided that yet, of, or I'll say K, I guess. K goes from zero to some upper bound. I haven't said, I don't know how many, I, don't, I have no idea how many um, rows there are yet. I'm gonna do that in a second. That's what's gonna be the upper bound here on the sum, is how many rows we're gonna have. But what we're gonna be summing is three over two to the K times N. So now that upper bound, right? Let's figure out what that, sorry, yeah, what that upper bound is here, right? How many layers we're gonna go well, the inside of the call, right? The argument, like the argument here would be T of N over eight, right? Two to the power of three for K equal to three. The argument of each call is N over two to the K, right? N over two to the K. That's what the argument of each call. This will stop, this depth, you know, this recurrence calling will stop 
when that argument is 1. So I want to know when is n over 2 to the k equal to 1. So when is n equal to 2 to the k? This is when k equals log n. Seems to be always the answer is when k equals log n. So there are log n layers here. So that's my upper bound here, log n, right? That's my upper bound. Okay, so that is the cost of doing this whole thing. Now we have to figure out what order of complexity this is, right? Well, that would ask for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To guess the tight O complexity. So we have to figure out what kind of complexity this is. Uh, this is the part where I think I may have made a mistake while doing this. Um, Question? Yeah. I think it's the geometric C, uh, series because we had a similar one in the session in like the lecture. And yeah. so it was like five over, like the ratio was five over four, but it kept on increasing because we can rewrite this whole thing as an n multiplied by one plus three over two plus three over two squared plus three over two cubed. And it goes n until three over two. Does that make sense? Sorry. Say so it goes until, uh, sorry, can you say it again? I'll say it again. No worries. Yeah. So let's say, right, n multiplied okay. by 3 over 2. Or n no, 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 no. Yeah. multiplied, yeah, like open, open, close parentheses, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, one, yeah. 1 plus 3 over, three over two. 2 plus 3 over 2 squared. And we can go up exactly. Okay. Like, plus uh, dot 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 plus uh, 3, 3 over 2, over two, two to, the, to the to the n or n. to the log n? The upper bound n. upper bound is log n adam you can look at the slide i sent on the chat that that's like the exact same thing okay and i think it's exactly what ahmed here is yeah. talking about yeah yeah but yeah but the, uh, exactly that's the question i'm talking about yeah yeah so the order would just be n i guess at the end the order would just be n but that's actually is that the answer that's not the answer in the thing here uh is that the, it's hard to like I, I can't really make sense of he his solutions are mostly just a bunch of words writing everywhere. <laughs> like, I don't really like can someone understand what the final answer is from this? Is he saying that the answer is n log n? Is that what that is? This is the solution. This is the entirety of the solution. Okay, there's one little sketch before, but that's it. Is he saying I think he's saying, so this is the sum I got. That's the same sum I got. Uh, I equals zero. Yeah, I equals zero. Um, uh, and I guess he's saying it's O n log n. Uh, what? And... I don't know. If, okay, and then let's see what you sent here. Geometric series for real x not equal to one. The summation that, I uh, uh, yeah, but we have an we have an n here. Oh, that's fine. It's just times a constant. Oh, actually, n is a constant to all this. Yeah, yeah, that's what we did. That's exactly what we did here. Okay, n is a constant to all this. So n comes out to the front. Then we have one plus da 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 da. Okay, and I yeah. think ours yeah. might be a little different from the question i sent i sent the question in the chat again it, i think it, it this one has two parts i don't know if that matters it has t and n by four plus t n by two plus n squared plus n squared yeah um like it doesn't really matter because then this the cost of each row is still some expression with k in it n squared n squared instead of n but no it's it's pretty much the same thing um you know the um, thing you do with the K? I, he never did that anywhere. In this the here? Yeah. Uh, well, but he kind of did. He said that... Lo, um, he said that... Uh, well, that's his upper bound. Log N. He didn't write it. Here, is this it? Non-recursive part? No, that's not it. Um... I don't know what that means. His K is I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so whatever he wrote at the top right corner, I think like, no, no, in the, like the, yeah, yeah, this one. Over here. I 
I think it's just trying to explain why we have just one in the first one like array let's assume it's an array one array the very first row and second mm -hmm. row we have three he's just explaining yeah the way of understanding yeah and he's explaining how like this part here is just explaining how we get n times three over two to the i mm -hmm. and then oh and then he says there's log n plus one of them Ooh, there's log n plus one of them okay so he says the total number of rows is log n plus one Log n plus one. Log n plus one. So, but then here he uses log n. Did he just take log n? Because if you look at the summary, it's just row i contribution 3i times n over 2i. And then it just says row log n. Yeah, which makes me think like the last row will have contribution. That's what he means. It makes me think that's what he's saying. Like that it's going to be. Uh, the contribution of the last row log in uh, but he does write did he did is there a video of him writing this text or is that just did he just scribble no, that on no. just, he just uh, he just put that on yeah. yeah 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 i see okay that's fine um so uh yeah um I don't know if I can, yeah, I don't, I don't know. This makes sense to me that it would have to have a log n the exponent here. And then n log, log well, because that's, that's the highest value of k. k will go up to log n. Right? k will go 1, 2, 3, up to log n. Well, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to log n. Oh, wait, I'm looking at the slides for the master method, and this seems like it. I think he says to... To compare it to a log function or something? Oh. Okay, actually, I don't know. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. So weird. It's okay. I don't understand anything on the slides. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all right. Yeah, I understand. Um, okay. Uh, I think we're pretty close to cracking it here, but uh, we didn't quite get it. Um, Wait, see, I think yeah. I see what he's doing. You see it's 3 over 2 raised to k? Yeah. But like uh, on the summation part, I think you just take the 2k out. And it's just 3k n over 2k. 3 to the k n over 2 to the k? Yeah. Because I, if you look at the slide, that's basically what he did in row 3. In, like, in uh, row here? You see n over, no, 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 down the in row i total contribution. Okay. N over 2, that part. No, no, the bottom one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. N over 2k times 3k. Which gives row, you three over uh, row i contribution n over two to the i. Okay, maybe I'm confusing the, things. To, I don't to, know. To the I. Yeah, that's the contribution of row i, and then that's what we have here in the sum, and then yeah, that's what that's what I have in the sum here. That's how much like each row contributes, and then each one has a value of n attached to it, right? Mm -hmm. A value of n attached to it, and then the maximum this goes log n times. So I guess maybe we have to assume, like it would make sense to say assume n equals two to the, I need another variable, um, i, I guess, let's, no, i is gonna get too confusing because he uses i, so uh, m, m is some constant, okay? Um, so then this is going to be uh, n times one plus three over two plus three over two squared plus, Three over two to the three plus da 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 plus three over two log base two of two to the m is just m, right? Uh, and at this point we can just say this whole thing's a constant. No, is it a constant? Uh, yeah, we can just say this whole thing's a constant because m is a constant. Yeah, we can just say this whole thing's a constant. Why didn't I replace this with two to the m though? <laughs> Uh, let's just say I don't. But that would tell me that the whole thing is big O n. But that is that what he's saying? No, it says big O log n, n log n log n here. So, um, I don't know. I just have this quick thing to say. Yeah, it's kind of confusing because the one we did in the lecture is O n squared. Like we know it's a geometric series because whatever is inside, there is a ratio. And yeah, it's exactly the same thing like eventually it's going to be 5 over 16 and to 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 like uh log k um 
And same thing we have over here. We have the same idea. It's 1 plus 3 over 2 and then 3 over 2 squared. Mm -hmm. 3 over... Mm -hmm. But why, why don't we just have big O and... Why is yeah, it why, do we do, why don't we just say this? Exactly. Yeah, because so it's just like all going to be a bunch of constants. Yeah, I, I kind of came to that conclusion just now that if I just assume that n is a power of 2, then this all whole thing is just a constant. I mean, it's a constant anyways, but like, yeah. Um, but um, I don't know. I have to see. I'd have to see the whole example on this one. What maybe I'll find the like. What lecture is this one from? Lecture five. Yeah. Lecture, lecture five. five. Four, four, four actually four. recurrent. Oh no, it's lecture four. It's just down at the bottom. But <laughs> okay, okay, no problem, no problem. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all good. It's all good. At the bottom, you said. Like at the bottom yeah. of the screenshot, lecture four, page fifty-four. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see. So, yeah, he did. He did the same thing, but he did not consider with yeah. So without, he did not consider in this case how many rows there will be. He just said they'll all be n squared, so it's big. It's it's theta n squared. But here he's considering how many rows. I mean, he's saying how many rows there are here. But anyways, okay, so then, so then we can apply the same logic here. All of these are just going to be some multiple of n. So no matter what, it doesn't matter how many of them there are. It's just, we're just going to be adding up a bunch of multiples of n's. So the whole thing is going to be theta n. And there we go. We don't need to do all this business with this and this and the sum. And da -da -da -da. Just this whole thing will be just multiples of n. So it'll be big O n or theta n. Okay, guys, let's try our last question and then uh, and then that'll be it for today. Let's try to use induction to prove this recurrence. Uh, I will I will try what I can and uh, uh, feel free to jump in if I'm doing something wrong. Uh, but yeah, this will be the last question for tonight. Unless there's a more interesting induction question, but I do, I do want to do one good induction. Use induction to prove Tn equals Tn minus 1 plus n equals theta n squared. T1 equals 1. Okay, uh, prove once for O n squared, once for omega n squared. So let's do uh, O n squared first. So using induction, we want to show that T of n equals Tn minus 1 plus 1. Um, uh, we want to show that T of n is greater, uh, big O means zero, less than, less than or equal to C n squared. That we want to show this is true. So we want to show that, okay, we want to show this is true. That's what we're trying to prove. Um, so, yeah, okay. So, base case, base case, okay, T of 1 right t of 1 equals 1 which is less than equal to c n squared for all c plus n not plus 1 plus n yes you're right plus n thank you yeah. okay so um now we have our base case which is true for all C, C E R, whatever. There you go. Um. Yeah. Well, not C E R. Sorry, C E N plus whatever. It doesn't matter. True for all C. Let's just say that. <laughs> Why overcomplicate? Um, we have our base case. Now I need my inductive. Inductive hypothesis. My inductive hypothesis th is that T. Is, is that for n equal to k, that t of n or t of k is less than equal to uh, less than equal to c k squared, right? 
do I say K now or do I say N now? I don't, I don't know if it matters. Okay, I'm assuming this is true. That there exists some C that makes this true. So now I need to show that this is true for N equal to K plus one. Are we supposed to do mathematical induction once we get the actual equation in terms of n? Like not as a recurrence formula? Um, yeah, I know what you mean. But we are already given the formula here, so we don't have to do any kind of checking of, like we're given we're given what the guess should be. We're given, like, we know, we're trying to show this is theta n squared. We don't have to make a guess for what the formula would be if it's given to us. Yeah, I know what you mean uh, in terms of n, but I think it's be because they give it to us, we don't have to do that. So we now need to show that it's true for n equal to k plus 1, which means t... Um, T of K plus one is less than or equal to C K plus one squared. Okay, using this fact, let's first of all plug in K plus one to this, right? So this is going to be T K plus one minus one plus K plus one less than or equal to C K plus one squared. I just did that by just plugging into this formula N equals K plus one, right? So K plus one minus one. So this is just T uh, t k plus k plus we did the base case t1 equals 1 which is definitely which is definitely big o in squared less than equal to c k plus 1 squared so at this point i need to use this i think i need to foil this so let me do that first t k plus k plus 1 less than or equal to c k squared plus 2k uh, whatever 2k plus 1 no i don't think i need to foil that actually <laughs> uh did we do the base case we had to do both big o and and omega like the lower bound yeah but we do we it says prove once for o and prove once for omega so i'm doing o, o first um i don't know if foiling that did anything i need to replace tk with ck squared do I need to do that? I think I need to do that. What am I trying to show? I'm trying to show... I'm trying to show that this is true. I'm trying to show that that's true. And I can use this fact. An input uh your ck squared like you can say that tk plus k plus one is less than or equal to ck squared plus k plus one because you know that tk is less than or equal to that's your hypothesis right yeah i i so okay so you're saying tk plus k plus one is less than or equal to ck squared which is uh plus k plus you still have to you have the other stuff oh you can plus just k replace, plus one you can replace tk with your um hypothesis and then you'll see that you end up canceling out ck squared because you'll have k plus one on one side and the other side so why did i not distribute the k oh okay so that's not what we're doing um yeah yeah i see what you i see what you're saying so we like just just okay. from this adding k plus one to both sides right we get this But the thing is, I have a C multiplying. No, no, they're, they're diff the, those two Cs. I don't know if they're exactly the same. Like, is it? This, mm -hmm. I don't think they're technically the same constant. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not the same constant. They're not the same constant. I know they can't they can be the same constant because it's a upper bound like it can just be it can any number that's it could be a number that's bigger than both 
like even if bigger than be, both. If you could put a C in there, so it's that, that it'll be larger if it's T T K or T K plus one. Like it, it could be the same constant. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, can we just replace what we found in the inductive hypothesis into the into the T K in the inductive step, and so it would be C K squared plus K plus one less than equal to this. So I can't just replace it, I don't think, because CK squared is bigger. So putting this here would make this side larger. Larger than this you're, side? You're I don't know. You're proving an upper bound, right? So as long as you prove that your upper bound is still larger than the maximum of TK, like so, TK can at most be equal to CK, CK squared. squared. That's the ma most it can be equal to. So if you can prove that that your other this other part is larger is still larger than than that then it must also be larger than tk yeah here i have actually i have an idea quickly tk plus k plus one less than equal to ck squared plus 2k plus one uh and then tk no no, no that was not gonna help anything i thought maybe i could replace oh, i didn't multiply the c in I thought maybe I could put this here somehow to say that um, TK plus just here I I, I sort of I try to solve for for C here um yeah you, oh that equation on the right oh no that that's fine actually. But you have two plus two k plus one. Wouldn't there be c multiplied yeah, yeah. to both of those? There as would well? be c multiplied to both of them. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's just say we replaced t k with c k squared. Um. So we can write that on the left side. So we'd so have c c k squared plus k plus one is less than or equal to c k squared plus two k c plus. Uh, would that be two c? Not one. Oh, I guess it'd be one. Yeah. Um. And now the c k squareds would cancel out, right? Like we can say that they're the same constant, I think. I I'm not hundred percent sure. Okay. Let's sure, let's just say we can. Um so you have k plus one is less than or equal to two c k plus c. Uh and that I believe you could prove with um either making you could you could pull c like make, you could pull c out of the right side and have like k plus one over two k plus one and show uh, that that's some number or you could you could say that that would always be less than one um but how is this showing a... how is this showing that this is true all you we just need to show that there's a constant number that we can put in front of k plus one that would make or the, like if we can find a constant that we can put in front of k plus one squared that will always be larger than um uh, T K plus one. T, yeah. So we have to find the we have to find the number. In terms of, in terms of k. No, no. Okay, go just go back down. Um. So, let's say we divide the left side by two k plus one. So we have k plus one okay. divided by two k plus one. By inspection, that's less than one, right? That has to be less than one. Yeah, because the denominator is bigger. Um, is bigger. So we know that c has to be greater than one. So you could you could technically say that uh, k plus one over two k plus one is less than or equal to one, which is less than or equal to c. This is this is smaller than one. So I like I don't know how to do k plus one over two k plus one is less than or equal to one. Yeah, it ha we know it has to be yeah. smaller or equal to one. one. Yeah. Which means if that if so the biggest number that k plus one over two k plus one can be is one. Yeah. So any number, if we picked C to be a number bigger than one, yeah. It will be it'll be larger than our Then original this will equation. be true if we choose a C value greater than one? Uh yeah, I think you could just plug that in to check it if you'd want. But uh, that should be correct. But I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to check it. How, like, like I can just pick, just, just, just. You can just try like a number that it's not your base case and see if it still holds. But like, like okay, like, let's say I'm choosing two. 
So t t k plus one less than or equal to two k plus one square. So what? Oh, and now plug this into here. So say this is where are we? So say that t k um, plus k plus one less than or equal to two k plus one squared t k is no that doesn't help us though how do i show this is true now i mean so um if so we know basically this is like we have a bunch of less than or equal to's in this scenario yeah. we start with tk plus one right and we could re we can rewrite tk plus one in terms of tk and some extra terms um now we can we know that tk has a remember we're just trying to find the 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 upper the upper bound the upper bound is is big o it doesn't have to be um like it it's it just has to be bigger than whatever tk is right that that's the rule this isn't like i don't know what they called it small o which is like yeah. guaranteed bigger at all at yeah, all yeah. points this is just big big o so we know that the by our hypothesis, okay, the absolute largest value that TK can have is CK squared. Yeah. So um, if we can prove that whatever whatever value we each, if we can prove that the right side is bigger than CK squared plus K plus one, it must also be bigger than TK plus K plus one. Um, and the biggest value this can have is k squared so we replace it with ck squared so we replace so it with ck squared so imagine if you took tk plus k plus one you'd put that to the left of the ck squared plus k plus one and you'd have another less than or equals two in between them because that's that's what we're saying we're saying tk plus k plus one that has to be less than or equal to ck squared plus k plus one because ck squared is the most that tk can be we're just yeah. substituting that for the largest possible Okay, and then we want to show this is true for some c that there exists some c where this is true, where yeah. this where this is true here, and so that's the process so we're going we through can here. So we find that c just has to be a number larger than the fraction that we know is is has to be less. Okay, than one. so so since since we can choose c equal to two in this case, right? Then since we can choose a value that makes this true. Uh, yeah, this is true, and we use the inductive hypothesis. Then that's the proof by induction. Then there we go. There exists there exists some C, and that so that that's the end then. I uh, yeah, that's I think that's the actual answer to this question. Do it should be C is greater than or equal to one. Let me find the answer here. Um, okay, let me, let me write down what he does for Omega because he actually goes into detail for Omega. He doesn't go into detail for the other one. So for, he says similarly to Omega. So let's just do Omega quickly. Tn equals Tn minus 1 plus n is omega n. Okay. So he doesn't check the base case. Whatever. Base case is true. Um, he says, inductive hypothesis. Tn is, is greater than Cn squared for some constant c. Then he says, Tn is equal to tn minus 1 plus n, which is the thing, okay, which is greater than equal to c n minus 1 squared plus n. Um, why c n minus 1 squared plus n? Because tn minus 1, okay. So the biggest value that tn minus 1 can have is ck squared. 
So k is n minus 1 plus n. So, no, 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 sorry, the smallest value, the smallest value that tn can have. So, okay, so which just means that c n minus 1 squared less than or equal to t n minus 1. So the so smallest value is this, so we put that there, because this is the, because c n minus 1 squared is the smallest value that t n minus 1 can have. That's our hypothesis. Right? So we substitute in our inductive hypothesis into what we're trying to show. Oh, we didn't, we're not, I didn't even look at what we're trying to show yet. Okay, I didn't look at what we're trying to show, but whatever. So then t n minus 1 plus n less than equal to c n squared minus 2 c n plus c plus n plus n. Okay, and this is this is bigger than c, let's say c2 n squared, right? Uh, big, okay, bigger than c n squared, right? If, if, if negative 2 c n plus c plus n is greater than or equal to 1 or 0, right? If this whole thing is bigger than zero, then this this will be bigger than c n squared. And this is true when and we solve for c. Yeah, this is true if I just factor the c. So it's going to be n one minus two c plus c greater than or equal to zero. So this is true when n greater than zero, and then uh, one minus two c. Uh, greater than one minus two c, greater than greater than zero. So this is one greater than two c, and one half less than greater than c. So c is gr less than a half. This is what he's. I'm pretty much just reading off of his thing here. <laughs> so he's saying that he's saying that. Okay, to recap, and this proves it's true because we can find a c value that satisfies that c n squared less than t n, which means c n minus 1 squared is less than t n minus 1, right? So taking our induct, taking our definition and applying our inductive hypothesis, which means that, you know, the biggest, the smallest value that t n minus 1 can have is c n minus 1 squared. So I'm going to replace that with this and say inequality. I'm going to foil this. Okay, so this side stays the same. And say that this is bigger than cn squared if this condition holds. We can use that condition to find the condition on c, right? Um, and so the fact that we could find a condition on c meant that the, the, it, it, the, the, it held, the proof held, whatever. And there's that. There we have there we have our somewhat solution to the question. Honestly, guys, it's it's getting pretty late. It's eleven o'clock. I say we should get some rest and try again tomorrow. I will definitely be doing a lot of practice tomorrow. So uh, I might also be I might also be in in person tomorrow. I haven't really decided if I'm going downtown tomorrow or not, but I may go downtown tomorrow. So if uh, I don't know if anyone wants to, you know, say hi. Maybe we can pra I, I can do some practice in person. Uh, you know, I can see. Uh, but uh, that would be interesting. And it, whatever. Anyways, I'll do practice tomorrow. <laughs> and I don't know, just because I, I like to study the, the SLC sometimes. So there's no lectures. Yeah, I have no lectures. Well, I have my math lecture in the morning, but that's... that's yeah, SLC is closed. Okay, but it, yeah, yeah, but... I mean, whatever. Other buildings too, right? Live went to the library today. Library was nice. Right? That was pretty good. Library was cold, very cold. <laughs> um, but library was nice. Eng building is very nice. Is the power back on in the buildings? Not at the SLC. Wait. So all the other buildings have power, but the I, SLC? I think every other one, except the SLC. Damn. Yeah. But it's okay. There's lots of other buildings to go to, right? So. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to wrap up for today. It's getting late. I don't know if we're going to make too much more.